So good evening, everyone. This is John Rollins, and it is Wednesday at 7 p.m. And so that means that we're here for our weekly STRIVE sessions. STRIVE stands for Strategies to Remain Informed, Victorious, and Empowered. And I am fortunate today to be actually recording this in the hotel room in Tallahassee, Florida, the home of the Seminoles, the home of the Rattlers, and I guess any other high school or groups that are part of this, this area. Thank you all for taking me in this week. Uh, we've been here working with the, the Property Tax Oversight Division of the Florida Department of Revenue, doing some training for the tax collectors, the management school, and it has been a delight. I can truly say that I am a fortunate person to have the opportunity to have so many people to come into my path and to contribute to a part of my journey. I've just enjoyed myself this week and so we're going to be here for, I guess, one more day, and then we'll head out back to Gainesville. But I did want to just come on for a few minutes and talk about the STRIVE session for this week. And our topic, our thought uh, that I, I would like to share is it all depends on how you are made. It all depends on how you're made. Last week, I was in a setting with a group of people, and one of the persons was walking through our, our just the area where we were. And um, they were carrying a glass and, and some lids, and one of the lids fell and hit the floor. And, and what do you think happened? <laughs> You're right. It shattered and it broke into many pieces, many pieces. Uh, I was trying to sweep them up, and uh, there were just slivers and, and pieces of fragmented glass all over the floor. And um, didn't give much thought to it at the time, other than uh, safety. Wanted to make sure that nobody was hurt, so we went and got the room and swept it all up, collected and put the pieces in the garbage. But this morning, I was getting ready for the, to go to the training, and I dropped a cap or a lid on the floor uh, from my aftershave bottle, and it fell to the ground. But instead of breaking and shattering, it actually fell, bounced, rolled around the floor, and came to a rest. And immediately, immediately, I remember what happened to that glass lid and thought came to me, well, I, I guess it really does matter what we're made of or how we're made. You had two situations that were both, I had two lids, both of them fell to the floor. And if we believe in the law of gravity, they both fell at the same rate. The law says 32 feet per second. And they both came to a and crashing stop. But one broke and shattered it so many pieces, the other bounce kept rolling. I picked it up and put it back on the, the bottom, and it, it's still okay. So here's the thing. They both fell from about the same distance. Uh, neither one of them fell in gravity. So in theory, the circumstances surrounding both lids were similar. However, the outcome was drastically different. And, and what was it that made the difference? Uh, well, I think it was how they were made, what they're made of. How many of you have observed two people go through what seemed like an identical set of circumstances and one person's life appears shattered and broken, destroyed beyond repair, the other person proverbially hits the ground, rolls around a little bit, gets back up, and continues on as if nothing happened? I've come to understand that, that some people are indeed more resilient. They, they, they're, they're made up of a different fabric, a different cloth, something that's different about who they are. I share often when we're in a training session, I borrowed this, I think, from a minister, Gary Armstrong. He was talking about the pressure, the pressure on the inside of someone or something is strong enough to deal with whatever that pressure is coming from the outside forces. Okay. Now, do understand this is not a statement of judgment regarding any particular individual, and by no means do I intend to minimize or lessen the impact of what someone may be dealing with. Okay. And in fact, I hope to do just the opposite. I want to support someone who may be experiencing some type of difficult time uh, going through uh, something what we would consider a traumatic situation. And I want to equip you so that you'll come through it still standing. Okay. And so the phrase that we want to talk about again is resiliency. Yeah, I hear that a lot today about talking some about our youth 
they, they, they want the uh, uh, outcome that they look for uh, with regards to life skills program, social skills program, attitude development, is can we create in them resiliency, the ability to bounce back? And, and this is this is the definition that I came up with uh, with regards to resiliency. I, I found it online. And the definition says that someone, someone or something that is able to withstand or recover quickly from difficult conditions. Are we resilient? Are we able to withstand? Are we able to recover quickly from difficult conditions? Or are we the type of people, and again, this is not a statement of judgment, but are we the type of people who, when we are confronted with calamity, misfortune, tragedy, we become broken, we become shattered, damaged, and we're, there's no value, no use for, for us or from us in the future. Okay? And so I want to talk with you quickly about how to, how I think we can become resilient individuals. Okay? And there are some other uh, synonyms for resilient, uh, strong, tough, hardy, uh, buoyant, uh, able, adaptable, flexible, irrepressible, difficult to keep down. Those are some other words that um, I found for the, the actual phrase resilience. And, um, and so I was looking online and I, I came across an article that was written almost a decade ago in Psychology Today. And uh, it was written by a lady, I think her name is Hera Morano, Hera Estrof Morano. Okay. And this is what she said. She said, at the heart of resilience is a belief in oneself, yet also a belief in something larger than oneself. So the, the whole idea of resilience is I believe that I have value here on earth, but I believe there's something beyond me that matters also. She said, resilient people do not let adversity define them. They find resilience by moving towards a goal beyond themselves, transcending pain and grief by perceiving bad times as a temporary state of affairs. It's possible to strengthen your inner self, your belief in yourself, and to define yourself as capable, that I am capable, I am competent, and it's possible to fortify your psyche, she says, so that you can develop a sense of mastery. And I think that's pretty interesting. What, what I take from that is it's not so much what happens to you, and we've heard that saying so many times, life is not about what happens to you, life is what's about what's happening in you. Is there enough inside of me that my belief in myself my expectations of, of my future, the way that I the way that I perceive life and its impact on me, is there enough inside of me that will allow me to withstand whatever adversity, whatever dis, dis, uh, dysfunction, whatever is going on in my life, so that I will still come out standing? And I believe there is. She said, those who master resilience tend to be skilled in preparing for emotional emergencies and adept at accepting what outcome what comes at them with flexibility rather than rigidity. In other words, they think to themselves, times are indeed tough, but I know that things are gonna get better. And, and I, that's a mindset that I think people should, should function from that vantage point. We have no control, or we have little control, I say, over what happens around us, but we have a lot of control about how we deal with it, okay? And the people who master, the people who are resilient, they look at what's going on and they anticipate in advance what my actions can be. To, to walk through life expecting or, or suggesting or and thinking that nothing ever is gonna to happen to me, that the life is gonna always be, they say the bed of roses, that the sun is always gonna be shining in my life. And that, that's us walking around in ignorance because I promise you, if you keep saying good morning, you're gonna find stuff that's gonna happen that will not be to your liking. So if we can know in advance, if we can anticipate that difficult times are going to come, then we can start preparing before those times come so that when they happen, we are not caught off guard, we're not blindsided, and we're able to withstand whatever that tragedy or, or unfortunate circumstance could be, okay? So um, there are 10, in the psychology today, there are 10 traits of emotionally resilient people, okay? And I, I I think I have, I think it was Matt, I, I don't remember the guy's name, okay, but it was from Psychology Today. And he said, one of the things about emotionally resilient people is they know their boundaries. They understand 
a separation between who they are and, and what's going on in their life, what's going around them. Okay? They, they, they take stress, but they look at it as temporary. Whatever they're dealing with at the time, it's not a part of who they are, it's what they have to deal with. They know their boundaries. Another thing that they do is they surround themselves with good people. Okay? I say all the time, you have to be careful about the people who are in your circle. Some people are going to be there and they're going to say, well, they're going to help build you up, or there are going to be some people in your circle who are going to be pulling and draining on you. And you want to surround yourself with the type of people who will build you up. Okay, I heard a statement about they're the lifters and the leaners, the people who are lifting you up or the people who are leaning on you, adding additional weight to you. Okay, make sure that you have the good people, the right people around you. Another trait of the emotionally resilient is they cultivate self-awareness. They they don't walk around with their head in the sand. Okay, if you have a bad day, it's going to be a temporary thing. It's something that we're going to get through. But I will come up with a strategy. I have a strategy not only for this getting out of this situation, but I will put together a strategy to prepare myself. So if that situation shows up in the future, it's not going to catch me off guard. Okay, self-awareness. They're in touch with their physical, their psychological needs. The physical, physiological needs, they know what they need, they know what they don't need. And when they come to a point where they say, you know what, this is bigger than me, I need help, they're not afraid to reach out and get some help. Okay? They're not prideful, they're not stubborn, they, they are flexible. These are the traits of a person who is emotionally resilient, someone who's going to be able to bounce back when things get bad. Another thing that they do is they practice acceptance. Sometimes you have to say, you know what, this is the, it is the way that it is. Okay. That's not saying that we're giving up, but that's again, we're not walking around uh, with our heads in the sand. We, we understand that I'm going through something right now, but I'm going to endure it. I'll give it some time. I'm going to give myself some time, uh, and, and I'll, I'll try to remove myself from that situation so that it does not become a, a permanent attachment to who I am. It says they're willing to sit in silence. They're willing to avoid a lot of the distractions that are going on. I know you understand there are a lot of times when we are feeding ourselves information through means that we accept, the means that we adopt that are actually eating away at us. Some of the stuff that we listen to, some of the people who are around us, some of the things that we read, those things are actually weighting us down. Okay? And so emotionally resilient people are able to sit in silence and not worry about it. Okay? They understand that there are some things I don't know when someone asks you, so what are you going to do about that? You say, I don't know. Okay, I know that something needs to be done, and I'm prepared to do something, but right now I'm not sure what to do. Okay? They understand they don't have all the answers. Okay, And so what they do is they build up something within themselves so that when those times come, when I don't know the answers, I know to either stop, pause, or I can go and find someone who may be able to help me out. Okay, They have a menu of self-care. Okay, They have habits that they have in place so that when stuff starts going on, they have a, a regimen they can go to, to that will prepare them to endure. Okay? We're talking about what are the traits of a person who is emotionally self-resilient. They have, we talked about earlier about the people who are around them, well, they know that they have a team of people, and I call it the inner circle. They have a team of people who they can go to and get help when they need it. Okay? And now that person may not be the same person all the time, but they have a team of people who they know that they can trust unconditionally, who's helping to look out for their best interest. Because they consider the possibilities. They say, maybe if I take this path, if I go this route, things are going to turn around for me. And they are willing and open to experimenting with other options. And then the last thing that it had is they get out of stuff that's over their head. They know when they have gone to, out into the deep water, when the stress is getting too bad, when they're becoming overwhelmed, they know, look, this is this is unfamiliar territory for me, and based on where I am right now, I probably don't need to stay here. And so those individuals recognize, they uh, evaluate the surroundings, they know what's going on, and they know I need to step back right now. So those are some of the traits of a person who is emotionally resilient, the people who are able to bounce back, the people who are not going to fall and be shattered, be destroyed, be broken beyond, create damage for other peripheral damage for other people. Those are individuals who are able to, in spite of what's going on, okay, they're able to withstand, they're able to endure, they're able to get up tomorrow and go on. 
All right, this is John. I'm wrapping it up uh, for our strive session strategies to remain informed, strategies to remain victorious, strategies to remain empowered. And as I say this all the time, our purpose for doing these sessions is to encourage those of us who are believers, those of us who are in the body of Christ. Guys, it, it's tough out there. I promise you it's tough. And somebody said it's not going to get much better right now. Things are going to stay that way for a little bit. So we have to find ways that we can encourage ourselves so that regardless of what's going on around us, it doesn't have to get in us. I recall, and I'll end it with this, I recall the time when, when the, the disciples were on the ship and they were out there in the middle of the storm and they were afraid and they panicked and they were ready to throw in the towel and they looked and they found that the Christ was sleeping on the boat. He was sleeping on the pillow. Okay? You can be in the storm. And the storm doesn't have to be in you. It all depends on how you are made. Okay, this is John. Hopefully, we'll see you next week at seven o'clock. And don't forget to tune in on tomorrow at seven thirty. You see Pastor Horace L. Mingo, Jesus People Life Changing Church. He'll be sharing some powerful insight on things that he believes will be of some value to the body of Christ. If you like what you heard, please go ahead and share. Add your comment. I love hearing from you. Thank you so much to all of those who shared. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you next week. All right. And don't forget, I, and I tell you this every time and I'll tell you today, you, you, you are important. All right. Love you guys.